Hey y'all, how y'all doing? This is my review for Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 6, Episodes 4 and 5. Remember I told y'all that I was going to be combining both of those together because I missed last week's um, episode. All right, so um, before I get into that, I just want to say that everything said in this video is alleged and it's my own personal opinion, okay? So Episode 4 picked up with the lady still at the spa, something teacher arranged so that they could come together and relax. Miss uh, De La Ghetto, as in Stormy, you know, she wanted to turn it into something else. So Kiki and Tiffany were steady going at it because Tiffany was running her mouth about some shit she didn't have nothing to do with. So, you know, Kiki didn't give a fuck about her being pregnant, but Tisha did. She got up and tried to calm Kiki down, you know, grabbed her face a little bit, not violently, but just to get her to focus on what she was saying, which was that they were there to relax, not argue. And she didn't want Tiffany to get worked up and go into an early labor, I guess. That's why, you know, Tiffany should have stayed her ass at home or made a deci uh, decision to just shut the fuck up while she was there. She should have stayed her pregnant ass in the other room where she was. Stormy chimed in and was saying how Kiki was speaking on the infidelity issue at Mel's Christmas party. Tisha told her that, you know, she wasn't going to talk about that anymore and let's not bring it back up. Stormy continued saying that there was all these people saying that pretty much Marceau was out there cheating and Kiki was there validating it. Stormy told Kiki if she felt a way about her saying something then she should have said something right then at the party because as a cousin, that's what she would have did. My thing is, if you know you speaking on some shit that you shouldn't be speaking on, which is somebody else's marriage, why the fuck do you need somebody else to tell you to shut the fuck up? Just because someone else is speaking on it don't mean that your ass got to join in. You could have just sat there and kept your mouth closed, okay? She claims that, you know, that was her issue with Kiki. Kiki not shutting the talk down about her cousin and, and saying what she said about Tisha. Okay. Um, even though she claimed that she never told Tisha what Kiki said. Mel decided that it was too much for her. She didn't come there for that. So she got up, kissed and hugged them goodbye and pretty much told them that she was going to catch them later. And before she left, she told them that she didn't think that that was what they desired and that they all should work, you know, to get what did she say? They all should work to get things going in a direction that they all wanted to go, which is not with a lot of what they were doing. Stormy felt like it wasn't nothing wrong with them carrying on like they were carrying on and said that what's crazy is when they can't sit around and talk like that and keep things bottled up inside. And that's exactly why people should not invite her ass nowhere since she thinks that's how things should be done. Stormy felt like it was all good. Wasn't nobody mad. And that was how you move forward. You move forward. Okay. By keeping your mouth closed and stop speaking on shit that ain't got nothing to do with you. Mel told them that if that's what they think is proper, you know, conversation, then that was their opinion. And she left after that. Okay. So in other words, Mel was trying to say that she was worldwide now. Okay. And couldn't be engaging in the ghetto of it all on camera. I guess she just started this season because I can't forget how she was hanging off her truck last season, screaming like she was an extra in the salt and pepper video. OK, but we're going to keep it moving. But anyway, Mel in her trench coat walked up out of bitch. OK, and left them to continue what it was they were doing. Tisha felt like it was good that they were talking. Kiki said, you know, she didn't see no resolve. And Tisha said that that was why, you know, they weren't in a good place. Because she couldn't see no resolve. Kiki didn't give a fuck though. Tiffany was like, we never um, got our massages. And I said, well, that's because you let Stormy talk your ass into going into the next room to start some mess. You know what I'm saying? So y'all, in the next scene, the guys, as in Martel, Marceau, and Maurice, met up at the batting cage. But it was looking like Martel had swung by the neonatal unit, okay? And stole some of the baby shorts. Now... That's the motherfucker that need to be on Crime Stoppers, okay? He was up in that bitch with those little ass shorts on and a motherfucking skull cap on, okay? I was like, is it summer or is it winter, nigga? It can't be both with your retarded ass. Then he gonna tell Maurice that it was cold as shit outside. Maurice said, I know. So why the fuck you got on those hoochie daddy shorts? Martel, dumbass, he stayed confused. Gonna fuck around and catch pneumonia in the kneecaps trying to be cute with his ugly ass. So Sheree called him while he was there. And I guess he sent her the voicemail. Maurice was saying how, um, I guess he didn't know he was still messing with Sheree. Cause last time he saw, he was chasing mail about the door with his stalkerish ass. 
he asked Maurice what that had to do with Sheree. Um, he was like, I was being a gentleman. That's the mother of my four beautiful children. I've always been a gentleman, going to always be a gentleman. I just wanted her to be safe. This is what Martel was telling um, uh, Mar Maurice, whatever his name is. Just lying, okay? I was like, nigga, stop with the bullshit. Because a nigga who wanted the mother of his four beautiful children to be safe wouldn't have been fucking other bitches without a condom and bringing his nasty dick ass back home to his wife. And he definitely wouldn't have been leaving the house to go to his personal gym, which was Ariane's bed during a fucking pandemic, then bringing his ass home, okay? Could have had a disease, all right? With one of them being COVID that was killing many people. So you fucking clown zip it. Okay. So Maurice asked him how Sheree was handling that. Marceau was like, not Marceau. Uh, yeah, Marceau, because Marceau had walked in. Okay. He wasn't there at first, but he had walked in later. So Maurice had asked Martel how was Sheree handling that. Marceau was like, you know, Martel can date. Maurice said that, you know, a double minded man was unstable in all of his ways. Martel is definitely unstable. Okay. So my soul told Martel to just play the field and date. I was like, nigga, he been doing that even when he was married. Okay. Even when he was married. And you should know, cause your foul ass was helping him do it. Martel was in a confessional saying that he didn't know why everybody was so interested in his dating life. Like nigga, you around here calling the paps just so they can see who you supposed to be dating. So it's like, shut the fuck up. People talking about your dating life, you know, it's what's putting a few dollars in your pocket. Okay. It's putting a few dollars in your otherwise empty ass pockets. So Marceau asked him what else he had going on besides Sheree. Martel told him that, you know, he was about to have the unveiling for the upscale magazine. Um, so he was about to put together an event to celebrate the lies that he told in the magazine. Cause that's all the fuck he did was lie. And the biggest lie was that he would rather spend time with his kids than have a million dollars or whatever the fuck he said. But at the same time, he was suing his ex-wife for custody so he could get a million dollars. Just a whole ass fucking clown. But anyway, Marceau asked him what exactly was he going to be doing. And he told Marceau that he was looking for a venue. Maurice asked him if he was going to wear another stole or two. And Martel said he was going to leave that in Atlanta. He must have read the comments and realized how silly his ass looked with no shirt on up under a suit jacket, okay? <clears throat> and then a dead ass fox around his neck at that goddamn uh, wine lunch in Atlanta. That's one of the reasons, you know, he didn't let Mel get her shit up at that house, in my opinion, when she left. Because he knew that he had planned on wearing some of her shit. So Maurice asked him if he was inviting Sheree and he said that he was okay. Martel began to tell him how over the past two years, he felt like his favor was stripped of him. Um, that's probably because he's operating as the devil. Okay. But anyway, he feels like it's coming back, I guess, because he, you know, he has an opportunity to earn a few dollars of Sheree's check by lying to the world about them being a couple when the only thing they are is a couple of clowns. Okay. Maurice said, I think struggle can definitely help uh, build your character. I was like, well, he got a lot of motherfucking struggling to go because his character is still in the trash. So Martel going to say, that's why you don't spoil your children. <sighs> Knowing him, he was probably taking a dig at Mel because what the fuck does spoiling your children have to do with anything? But of course, he was going to find any opportunity to trash Mel as a parent. He just mad that he can't spoil his children. If that was really an issue, you know what I'm saying? Then he wouldn't be in court asking the judge to grant him some of Mel's. He wouldn't have been in court asking, you know, the judge to grant him some of Mel's money so the kids could live the same lifestyle that they were living when they were with her. Okay. So it's like, shut the fuck up. You know, I, I can't stand him. He just mad because he ain't being spoiled no more. And probably low-key jealous of his kids, especially Sugar Mama, because she now makes more money than he do at the young age of three. That's why he was trying to get a cut from her product line, old trifling ass. If he can't be spoiled, he don't want them to be spoiled either. 
anyway, Marceau started talking about his father um, was like 27 years old with eight kids and how he hustled, uh, saying he wanted his kids to have this and that. He said that he didn't even know that they were poor. Then, you know, he was like, it looks like Martel is coming around from his divorce. And I was like, in what world? Which Martel are you talking about? The divorce was finalized in, what, 2020, I believe? And he still haven't accepted that shit. He's still out here harassing his ex-wife and begging her to take him back, thinking that he's entitled to her and her money. He literally sitting back, stalking her, in my opinion, watching everything that she does, including how she now has a line of clothing out with Jay Bolin. So now Martell want to come out with a suit line, okay? He can't seem to separate himself from Mel because without her, he has no sense of direction. Without Mel, he has no sense of direction. So he copies everything that she does, okay? And when it doesn't work out for him, he gets mad. That doesn't sound like a guy who has come around from divorce, okay? Martel's words don't mean shit because all he does is lie. Actually, they all be lying and just be talking about their asses. He going to say, hopefully, Martel is uh, a stronger and wiser man and father and maybe even a husband. He's still the same nigga he was when his wife uh, left him, okay? Period. And that ain't a good thing. I don't know why they on this show acting like Martel ain't the devilish bastard that he is. But anyway... Martel started talking about how he had a big, not Martel. Yeah, Martel said that. Martel started talking about how he had a big family with a lot of kids. Maurice was like, you always said you wanted a lot of kids. Martel said he wanted more. Then Marceau, oh, goofy ass, going to ask Martel if him and Sheree talked about having more kids. And I was like, are y'all really going to stand here and act like Sheree ain't knocking a fuck out of 60? What babies is she going to have? Please stop. But I guess they ass, you know, going to pretend like she wasn't knocking the fuck out of 60. Martel was like, actually, Sheree is down for having kids. So they was like, how many? Because, you know, kids is multiple. Martel was like, it could be one or two or three. He said he wasn't going to put a limit to it. I was like, and you don't have to because Sheree's ovaries going to do it for you. So they was asking Martel if Sheree uh, was the one. And he said he didn't know. He know damn well she ain't the one, two, three, or the motherfucking five. Martel want a bitch who just turned 18, in my opinion. He like him young, okay? Martel want to be able to groom and program his bitches. So next, Marceau and his business partner, the one he gave Tisha's office to, they had a scene together. Marceau said that, you know, he and Gino have uh, like-minded ideas when it comes to show. I guess, you know, fuck his wife's vision. He going to ride with Gino's. He said that he feel like Gino may have strength in the areas where he's weak and feel like, you know, they can have a very complimentary relationship. Apparently, their relationship trumps the one he has with his wife. OK, so they started talking about the project that they're working on. Marceau told him that they both would draw a salary and that they would be um, there would be a profit share and that you know, they were dating. His business partner then told him that if he was going to treat him like he treat Tisha, he didn't want, you know, he didn't know if he uh, wanted to marry him. So anybody would ask and see that Marceau is a terrible ass fucking husband and treats Tisha like, you know, he fucking crazy. So Martel, not Martel, um, Marceau went into telling Gino how he dated Tisha for a month before he said that, you know, he think he wanted to marry her and it's now going on 17 years. So I guess that was Marceau's way of letting Gino know that it don't take long to see if their partnership is going to work out. But if it does, he's in it for the long haul, I guess. So he told Gino that them coming together was big because it was black power, two black men coming together. Now, if he can only come together with his wife. But anyway, Marceau was saying how Show is a small company, but Gino came from a big company and worked with some top people. He told Gino that he had that big business thinking. And, you know, Gino told Marceau that the main thing is that they operate like a big business, even if it meant Tisha approving expense reports. They need checks and balances. He was telling Marceau that they need to make sure that even though, you know, they're coming together, 
Tisha is still involved and can sit in because she's an asset to the company. More like, you know, the fucking owner of the company. So she says. So Marceau was looking at him. Um, Marceau was looking at him like, I know you ain't saying my wife got to be involved in this. So he told Gino that, you know, he looked at him as a friend, not just a business partner and started telling him how he was torn because, you know, his perspective was that he thinks Tisha knows his thoughts when it comes to a husband, but not as a businessman. He didn't even make no sense, y'all. He was just trying to come up with an excuse as to why his wife shouldn't be a part of what they were doing with his ass holdish ass. He was like, I tell her about everything I'm doing out there, but when the bad stuff happens, I shield her from that. I'm like, I, I, I can't stand myself. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? What bad stuff? As in the multi-million dollar lawsuits that are allegedly against your ass? That would tell her that you don't know what the fuck you're doing as a businessman. Oh, okay. That's what you're talking about? So Gino asked him if he was shielding Tisha from that because he didn't want her to be worried about finances. Okay. Marceau said that he didn't want to worry her when, you know, he come home and say that it's a tough month on bills or whatever. I feel like he's full of shit. I feel like he's just full of shit. You don't want her to worry about bills, but you don't give a fuck about her worrying about whether or not you out there being a hoe. Okay. Like your homeboy, Martel. I say you don't give a fuck about Tisha's feelings. Okay. You don't give a fuck about him. And he was just making up some bullshit. So, you know, Gino will accept the fact that he don't want to work with his wife. That's what that was all about, in my opinion. She probably better at running the company than he is. And he can't have that. Because in his mind, he the man and know everything. Her place is in the kitchen and in the bedroom. Let him tell it. So Gino told him that, you know, as a man, he should let Tisha know what's going on and then absorb it and, you know, calm the ship and let him know that um, <clears throat> how he reacts is up to him. No, what did he say? He said his uh, Gino said that how she reacts is up to him. OK, to calm it and let her know that you know they got it so pretty much he telling him that he had to have a conversation with tisha and telling him that tisha was his teammate but marceau as we all know don't view tisha as a teammate gina was telling him that he had a blessing which was tisha and that he wished that he was more of a partner with his ex-wife instead of putting her in a box telling her you know he'll do this and she do that he was telling marceau that gender roles were, you know, very much so outdated. And he probably realized that shit after his marriage was over and would probably still be with his wife had he realized that shit sooner. But my soul, you know, he's too stupid and stubborn to treat Tisha, you know, like his partner. But he gonna wish he did when she finally wake up and decide, you know, she sit to his shit and leave his ass sitting there looking stupid and chasing her down, talking about, you know, is this marriage over? Just like Martel. So he told Marceau that, you know, he got to be careful with the protection thing because, you know, uh, he want wolves, not sheep, somebody that can hold things down. And he knows that Tisha can help run that company, in my opinion, but that's going to make him feel a way, in my opinion. OK, he don't know what it is to treat his wife as a partner. But Gino told him that not having Tisha in the decision-making process is hurting him more than it's, you know, helping him. Marceau was like, man, Gino, that's a lot. He act like, you know, the thought of working with Tisha was just killing him. Just like he said, Gino has strength in areas where he's weak. So does Tisha, in my opinion, especially if she pulled a company up out of hole, you know, she pulled the company um, up out the hole that it was in when him and Martel was fucking shit up. So next y'all, Tisha went to see Kimmy. Kimmy was going to let her use a spare office that her and Maurice had since Marceau kicked her out of her office with his trifling, disrespectful ass. Kimmy was like, um, what did she say? She was like, who does that? Who gets kicked out of, you know, the office they helped build? I was like, Tisha, because she allowed him to do it. But anyway, 
the office that Kimmy was giving her, it used to be Maurice's podcast room, but I guess he haven't used it as of lately. So she was going to let Tisha use it. And Tisha was going to talk to uh, Maurice to see if he would get his shit out of there. She needed to be talking to Marcel about getting Gino shit out of her fucking office. But we all know that that wasn't going to happen. So Kimmy was telling Tisha how appreciative um, she was when, you know, she invited her to spa day. She thought it was cool how she invited Mel and Mel accepted. Kimmy said it feels like Kiki always got something to get off her chest, though. And um, she mentioned how Kiki had a moment with Stormy and also Tiffany. Tisha said that she had to get in the middle of what Kiki and Tiffany had going on because she know that, you know, Kiki don't give a fuck about Tiffany being pregnant. And apparently Tiffany didn't give a fuck either. Okay. Or she would have kept her mouth closed or stayed her ass in the other room. Uh, Kimmy was like, Tiffany was acting like she don't give a fuck either. And I, and I know she didn't, but overall they felt like it ended well. And um, Kimmy thought that it was a stepping stone and time to move forward. And that's when um, Mel had walked through the door because Kimmy had invited her. Uh, Tisha didn't know that, though. At least I don't think she did. Okay. Um, Kimmy wanted to see if Mel and Tisha was in a space where they could move forward. Mel came through with, you know, the chicken salad and crackers for them to munch on because no matter what, Mel going to eat. In the middle of a war, she going to eat. Okay. In the middle of a fucking hurricane, she going to eat. During a robbery, she going to eat. No matter what, she going to eat, okay? But anyway, Mel said that she's optimistic about her and Tisha and hope that they can get to a better space than they uh, were four months ago when Tisha told her that she had a dark soul. So Kimmy told them that she wanted to feel like they were in a place where, you know, it's time to move forward. They are the core components of, you know, all that are on the show. So she felt that keeping themselves intact was imperative to them moving forward with some of the ventures that they wanted to do in the community. She said it starts with them. Mel said actions speak louder than words. And then Tisha said that people communicate a certain way and may feel that that's best for them. But I think she was trying to say that it may not be best for everybody else, I guess. So Mel said that, you know, they're demonstrating that there is a desire to move forward versus what's been going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. She feels like respect has been missing so she then told them about the tea that she was going to host and how you know someone was going to come in and talk to them about etiquette communication styles and ways to communicate respectfully Mel asked them you know how they felt the others would receive that tisha said that they got a lot off their chest at the spa so she felt like they would receive it well um kimmy thought that it was a great idea as well okay tisha said that you know it would be um good to prepare them for the business expo that she really want them to do she was saying you know what did she say she was saying how they were business women with degrees and licenses and doing a lot and they have colleges there in huntsville and they have daughters you know coming up under them so you know she think that they should share with the community and each other because they have a lot to share with the people she feel like it will be a shame to let petty stuff get in the way of them helping the community. All right. So that was that with that scene. Um, yeah. And Mel left. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. So next we had Tisha and Marcel at home. He brought her up some breakfast, some lamb and eggs, I guess, just as long as it wasn't that raw ass bacon that he undercooked when they were on that, um, counseling retreat. Like nigga, were you feeding humans or dogs? But anyway, Tisha wanted to show him her presentation, okay, the presentation that she was going to present to the group, but her computer was acting up. So Marceau took that opportunity to start telling her about the conversation that he had with his business partner, Gino, claiming that it hit home for him. I don't think shit hit home. I feel like his business uh, partner told him to bring Tisha on board for their project, so now he's acting like he had a change of heart, when really... He only doing it because his business partner feel like it's best for the bit for the company. Trust and believe he don't want to work with Tisha, as in Marceau. I feel like he's full of shit. He went into saying how he's always been a protector and how when he was working by himself, he would shield Tisha from all the bad things that were happening in the business because he didn't want to unload that on her. He mean he didn't want her to know that he didn't know what the fuck he was doing in my opinion so he was feeding her all this bullshit and she was eating it up because i guess she want to believe that he really mean what he say about working with her 
You know what I'm saying? He claimed that he wasn't trying to hold her back or put her down, but that's exactly what the fuck he was trying to do. In my opinion, I feel like he's scared of Tisha being more successful than he is. But he said that he had to realize that he wasn't being a good teammate. And Tisha got to tearing up because she thinking that he didn't saw the light, okay? When really he was just trying to keep the lights on. So if his business partner telling him he need Tisha, he going to pretend that he do and allow her to be on board with that project. He tells her that he going to always try to be better. And I was like, in the business or the marriage? Because in the marriage, it looks like you are content with being an asshole. But anyway, Tisha said that she was happy because, you know, she was like hoping that it would get better. And I guess, <clears throat> excuse me, I guess felt like she, you know, was about to give up. And then here he comes with the fake shit, making her think, you know, he's really a changed man. He then, you know, told her that he felt like they should sex it out. And I almost threw up in my mouth a little bit. Now, moving on to the next scene, y'all. The original six came together because Tisha had invited them because she wanted to pitch, you know, them an idea. So Martel, Maurice, Marceau, Kimmy, and Tisha, and Mel, you know, they all came together. Martel came walking his ass in. And I'm like, nigga, why are you here? What business do you have? Your motherfucking ass ain't even got a builder's license. He talking about he was excited that Tisha could get them together. I bet he was excited because he got to be in the same room with the person he'd been stalking for the past three fucking years. That's the only reason he came, in my opinion, other than to see if they was going to have some free food. He said that he was in a good space, even though him and Mel had their challenges, you know, and, you know, their courtship. Um, but he was going to try to keep it professional. Any space that Mel was in was a good space for him because he missed that old thing, okay? You know what I'm saying? That thing that he said wasn't satisfying him. Plus, it's like, nigga, y'all in court because that's where the fuck you drug her to with your bitter ass. So Tisha and Marceau finally arrived 45 minutes late, though, okay? Um, she saw Mel in her fancy dress and asked her where she was going afterwards. She knew that it was going around that Mel had a new boo. And Mel was like, this is called happy, happy and blessed. So I guess she wasn't going nowhere afterwards. She was just looking good just because and showing Martell what his ass lost. So anyway, Tisha got the presentation started, hoping that she could get everybody on board. She pretty much wanted them to participate in a panel or presentation at the expo, highlighting their business because between them, they have a variety of different businesses. Martell was like, um, what did he say? Oh, yeah. No, was that Marceau or whatever? I'll get to that later. But um, Martel was looking like, oh, am I included in this? I was just here for the food. When you look at Martel, it's like, I just, I, I, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. Why are you there? Like, seriously, just take this shit in. He do not have not one successful business. Okay. He just there. But anyway, he was, uh, I don't even know. Let me just try to get through this review because I am genuinely just disgusted by this nigga. I really am. Okay. But anyway, I'm assuming that Martel was just there, you know, to see if there was any free food and to be in the room with Mel and things of that nature. Okay. Cause like I said, what business is he going to highlight? Okay. Males. Since he always in her motherfucking business, maybe sugar mama will let him get up there and talk about her business. Martel said that what him and Tisha is doing no, Marceau said that what him and Tisha is doing is pretty much assembling um, a coalition of the willing, as in, we not paying y'all shit. Y'all just come out and help us. But then again, they will be shining a light on their business as well and could bring business to themselves. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little confused. So Tisha asked them what they thought about the presentation that she did. Did they like the name? or whatever, but I don't think that they were thinking about the name, okay? More like, what was the objective? 
Was it just her and Marceau's event? Will they be getting paid? So Kim, uh, Kimmy asked her, what was the objective? And was it her event? And they were just going to show up. She wanted clarity. Okay. Tisha said that the vision came to her and she just wanted to share it with them. Kimmy said all she was hearing was Tisha and Marceau repurposing the comeback group and trying to sell it back to them, the original comeback group, because the idea wasn't, you know, new or original. She asked Tisha if that was just her event, because that's what it looked like. It was a post of her and Marceau. Tisha said that she would love for it to be something all of them worked on. And who knows, maybe they could take it to other states and get more businesses to come in and speak. She said that they usually just talk about, you know, things and she wanted to this time kick shit off, you know, get the ball rolling. So Mel said that she thought that the idea was amazing and then asked Tisha what was the budget for the speakers and the panels. Tisha was like, what do you mean? Mel was like the pay. Tisha said, oh, you mean how much I was going to pay people to speak? So about that, I wasn't paying them shit pretty much. But I'm not mad at Tisha. However, she can't get mad at people if they want to be paid because it is their time. Okay. And their time is valuable. If they want to do it for free. Great. If not, I understand. Tisha said that, you know, she wasn't going to pay anyone to speak. Um, because, um, yeah, then Mel had asked her, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm a little confused, but hold on one second. So I was just looking over my notes. Yeah. So Tisha said that she wasn't going to pay anyone to speak because she wasn't charging people, you know, for the event. It was going to be a free event. I guess it would be different if she was going to profit from it, I guess, because, you know, it was helping the community. She assumed that they wouldn't mind working for free. So Tisha was like, if y'all want to get paid a fee, we can talk about it, but I would have to charge the people to come. So Martel bum ass going to whisper to Marceau and tell him to um, ask Mel what her fee was. He always putting somebody up to some bullshit. Like, what the fuck? Why are you worried about her fee? Her fee ain't none of your motherfucking business. Just know that whatever it is, even if it's one cent, your ass can't afford it. Oh, nosy ass. He remind me of one of those gossiping ass women. He's sitting up there worrying about somebody's fee when he need to be worried about his ears because it looked like them bitches was about to fly straight the fuck from his head. He's sitting there looking like something straight out of Star Trek. Ugh. His ass shouldn't even be there because he has absolutely nothing to showcase. Not one successful business. Not a drop of knowledge or anything. Nothing he can share. But he want to get there and start mess little bitch ass nigga martel walkie talkie broke alicia Holt, taco meat beard ass bastard nasty mouth ass munch illiterate ass hoe i can't stand his stupid ass how the fuck you at a business table with no business always trying to sit at the table and bring absolutely nothing to the motherfucker but drama empty pockets and stupidity so mel told him not to ask her shit because it wasn't none of his motherfucking business even though that was one of his requests in court. Broke bitch, bum ass bastard. Ugh. And I was just thinking, if he ain't been able to pass that builder's license test, that means he don't know what the fuck he doing when it comes to building anything. Mel was the one making the money in a marriage. And just to think, he wanted to go around telling people that he was the breadwinner. But he can't win shit now that he not married. Such a fucking loser. In my opinion. Ugh. Mel told Tisha that she or someone from her management team would email her her fee. So next, y'all, Kimmy asked Tisha what was her marketing objective. Was it going to be just social media or personal invitations or what? Marceau said that him and Tisha were going to use their platform and he was asking that they do the same. So Mel was up in that bitch like, show me the money. How much y'all paying for posts? So Tisha was like, we not paying for posts. Mel says sometimes she do contracts for speaking. Um, she said it's one thing to be on a panel speaking, and it's another thing if you want posts. Tisha was like, I don't know if we're going to be able to afford your ass. While Mel was charging fees, she should have charged Martel as one because I know it took a lot, okay? <clears throat> I know it took a lot of work for her not to vomit looking at his ass. That's a whole fucking job in itself. 
Like, pay me for my pain, Mr. Broke Ass. But she know he ain't got shit. Mel said, um, if it was meant to happen, it'll pretty much happen, okay? Tisha said that she would love for everybody to be a part of it, but she ain't trying to pay an arm and a leg. Mel told her that, you know, that's what sponsorship is for. Tisha said they could raise the money, but she want to make sure that everything makes sense financially. Mel felt that Tisha and Marceau had good intentions when it came to the expo, but she wasn't working for free. She said just because her and Tisha were back talking don't mean that she was doing favors. And I get it. Kimmy asked Marceau how, you know, um, Kimmy asked Marceau how was him and Tisha going to go about things before Mel mentioned the sponsorship. Marceau said it was just going to be a labor of love because he wasn't charging or paying shit. So he then pulls out some champagne to toast. Kimmy was in a confessional talking about what are we toasting to because ain't nobody agreed to shit. And, you know, maybe they were just toasting to an idea. But she said that she was going to need a lot more clarity before, you know, making a decision. Decision. So Kimmy said, you know, she was confused and was trying to figure out if something, um, she was trying to figure out if it was something that they were doing to help plan the event or, you know, were there going to be multiple meetings or are they just showing up? Tisha asked Kimmy, um, what would she like to do? Kimmy just wanted to know, you know, the original vision and was it just her and Marceau's event? Tisha said that she was taking ownership of it. And Marceau uh, told Kimmy that it was him and Tisha's event and that they wanted them to participate in it and they could have as much or as little involvement as they wanted. So that was the clarity that Kimmy was looking for. After that, they toasted and Mel was glad because she was ready to go. I know she didn't want to be sitting across from Martel having a look in his disgusting ass face. Anybody that fucks with him is just sad and pathetic. Ugh. But anyway, folks were ready to go because they had been there for a minute. I mean, Tisha and Marceau, um, they did come in 45 minutes late. And Kimmy was like that one student in the classroom that kept asking questions when everybody was just wanting to leave. So Marceau, you know, he was like details coming soon. And then they all stood up to clink, clink their glasses. OK, Martel going to say, so we toast into that. They should have said, no, nigga, we toast into your bum ass finding a motherfucking job. Tisha felt like the meeting uh, didn't go as well as planned and didn't know if Kimmy and Mel was going to be on board. My soul reminded her that, you know, that was the original six. So I guess compared to all of their other meetings, he think it went well. And that was that for episode four, y'all. So now let's get into episode. Let's get into episode five, y'all. Okay, so this episode opened up with Stormy's Where's Waldo looking ass and her husband walking into the warehouse to have a meeting with her employees. Why the fuck her and Courtney walk up in that bitch and all Stormy had was about six employees? Now she has five because she fired her cousin in this episode. How the fuck you got uh, warehouses full of product, okay? And only five motherfucking employees. Make it make sense. That's why people ain't been getting their shit. Because she ain't got nobody there to send the shit out. Then she had the nerve to try to blame them for having orders backed up and the company losing money. No, bitch, you're the reason the company is losing money, in my opinion, because you should. Are you kidding me? You should have enough common sense to know that your ass going to need more than five or six employees to push the products out. Everybody walking around like, you know, these strong business people and don't know shit about business. Apparently, she talking about, you know. Whenever the customer's order is behind or whatever, she offering them a, f- a free gift or tell them to take something off their order. And I feel like she lying because the way some of the customers were talking, they ordered last year and still haven't received their shit. And, you know, she wasn't giving no refunds from what I heard. So what exactly was she returning or taking off? I feel like the scene was this scene was just for the show. Her business is failing, in my opinion, because she don't know how to do business. How the fuck is you coming out with new products and still got people who haven't received the old products yet? How the fuck are your customers supposed to get their shit when you ain't even got enough people there to send the shit out? And the ones you do got there ain't doing shit or either doing too much. You know what I'm saying? And they worn out. like, Because I feel like they probably there doing the best they can while her ass probably working them like slaves, in my opinion, then going to get on this TV show to try to make herself look better by blaming 
everything on them. Then she got the nerve to cry. Like, girl, if you don't go sit your ass down somewhere, then she going to tell them that as a leader, she feel like she want to always take accountability. I was like, her and Martel got a lot in common. Not only are they liars, but their definition of accountability is blaming everybody but themselves. She told them that, you know, they were a family and she wanted them to start acting like it or working like it won. She said she feel like she dropped the ball and should have came more. I was like, yeah, you should have came but brought like 500 more employees with your ass. So yes, you dropped the ball. In my opinion, you dropped it right down on your motherfucking head. She was talking about when she built the business, she saw it as a vehicle to help other people. It looked like Stormy was in Walmart one day shopping. Okay. She was in Walmart one day shopping and randomly asked a few folks that she saw walking around if they wanted a job and then gave them the address to her sweatshop and put them to work. Okay, now they tied out the working conditions and like, fuck it. And before you know it, orders are backed up. And she over there making new shit, but ain't asking herself, who the fuck going to keep buying from her if they, you know what I'm saying, paying their money for shit and ain't getting their shit. And she telling them no refunds, allegedly. And it's like the problem she having didn't just start. People saying they ordered last year and still haven't received their shit. So what? She waited months later till she was a part of the cast to address the issue with her team. And I don't even know if I should call it a team because she only got like six damn workers. Also, I don't understand her. I don't understand her, Destiny, and Martell's thought process. It don't matter how many new products you push out there when you steal the same motherfucker behind it. The same motherfucker who know these people ain't received their shit, but you allegedly don't want to give them their money back. One would think that that's probably because your ass ain't got it to give. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got it like you out here trying to make folks think you got it. I heard some interior decorating people suing her ass now. Okay? Not just Apex for that $1.7 million. I guess her employees are responsible for that too, huh? So she asked her employees if she could do something. What could she do different or whatever? One of them, you know, the one who looked like he had skipped out on AA just so he could be you know, there for work. He said that um, she needed to get more labels. Then the employee that was a cousin said that she needed to get more hands because he was the only one on production. When the others need help, he got to stop what he doing to go help them. Okay. Then that leaves no one on production. And then he have to hear them as in her and Courtney on his ass talking about why you ain't doing your part when he's helping others with a part. And I was going to say, you know, when I first saw only six motherfuckers in that warehouse, I was thinking, what happens if somebody gets sick and can't make it to work? What happens if somebody got to take a mean shit? What happens if one of them find another job and decide to quit because none of them looked happy, okay? I doubt if they getting paid anything different from what they would make at the Dollar General, okay? Then what? What happens? So when her cousin told her that she needed to get more hands, Stormy challenged, um, challenge that saying that she feel like they're not operating at the maximum capacity okay so basically she was telling her slaves that they weren't picking cotton fast or hard enough okay so she tells him that before they bring in any new hands she has to see more productivity okay but don't she need to bring in more people to get more productivity she don't really want no outsiders coming in because she was like there can't be no holes in the ship. I was like, girl, it wouldn't make no difference because your shit's starting to sink anyway. It already has holes in it. And you one of them. So bye and take your laughing ass husband with you because ain't shit funny. He can't keep a serious face for shit. Probably because he knows that, you know, he's a part of Stormy Skip. Then he going to tell the employees that if they don't like what Stormy was telling them, you know, like putting in more work, then they can leave. And it's like, y'all can't afford to let nobody go because they going to fuck around and not have anybody there. When you only got six employees, you can't afford to let anybody go until you at least find a replacement. But anyway, that was all with that scene, y'all. Okay. Next, we going to move on over to Mel, who was having a meeting with her team to talk about everything she had coming up. And the difference between her and Stormy's team was night and day. They actually acted like they wanted to be there. And, you know, they acted like they wanted to be there doing what they were doing. 
that's probably because Mel didn't randomly pick their asses from off the street and she probably pay them what they're worth. Plus, she fed them during her meeting. Stormy employees look like they were hungry, thirsty, bored, lost, and probably a few more things, okay? But anyway, Mel wanted to help Tisha and Marceau with their business expo, but first, she had to see if she had any more room on her plate to partake in anything else. So, you know, her team, she wanted to meet up with her team and see what they had going on for the year. So her team started telling her what they had lined up for her. First, her chemist was there and was speaking on how well 7th Avenue was doing. So her chemist is real, okay? Because you know that in my opinion, Stormy was implying that Mel's chemist wasn't a, she was implying that Mel's chemist wasn't a real one. At least that's what I took from her statement. After Mel had announced that she was going to be coming out with Sugar Mama's line, Stormy announced that she was bringing something out for her son, Chess. I guess some of Mel's fans told her that she was copying off of Mel and Stormy told them that she had already had plans to bring a product out, you know, for Chess for his first birthday. Then she went into talking about how a real chemist would know that it takes time to come out with a product and whatever else she said. That's why people saw it as shade to male, because as far as I'm concerned, that's what the fuck it was. OK, I mean, she could have gotten her point across about not copying off a male without being shady. You know, it may it made it seem as if she don't like when other black women are out here doing their thing. But anyway, her chemist was saying how she launched seventh avenue in february of last year and it had generated over a million dollars in sales after just a few short months so it has been over a year now so i'm thinking that the company has made several million dollars okay um that was for the chick who came through here the other day talking about do we really know what mail is worth because she be capping Mel never got on TV, like I said, saying what she was worth, but we knew that Mel was making some nice, you know, money, okay, from her businesses. Even before she started 7th Avenue or any of her current businesses, she had a million dollar company with her real estate. So just, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there. She started with her grass cutting, comp- uh, grass cutting uh, business before any of that. And then she had Hold and Hold, which is now dissolved, but it was a money maker, okay? Mel been making money. She has a property preservation class, a 7th Avenue, her Sugar Mama products. Okay. She has this show and she has a grandeur business. I think that's what you call it. And probably some other shit that I'm overlooking. But anyway, a director, a producer from her team said that he and uh, her manager, Don, had been around shopping a movie and they wanted her to be the lead in it. So, of course, Mel was excited about that. Um, Her senior publicist was telling her that she would be able to go around to different high schools to talk to them about how to start their own businesses. And that was throughout a course of six months. Her international publicist was telling Mel that um, she was telling her that since she did New York Fashion Week, she wanted her to do other fashion weeks. And she told Mel that she had called her contacts in Dubai, Luxembourg and Milan. Because she was going to be pushing uh, her into the international market. So Mel went into saying that whenever you're on a mission and in purpose, God puts certain people in your life to help you on that mission and purpose. And she's grateful to have all of those beautiful, black, successful people there to help her reach her dreams and her goals okay and i love how everything was just so organized like she had everybody from whatever she was doing whether it was fashion speaking engagements movies or you know her beauty brand they all came together in one room just to discuss the moves they were making to help push her to where she was trying to go so i like that so after the meeting was over her and don sat and talked And Don was checking in with her about, you know, how she was doing mentally and emotionally with everything that was on her plate. Mel said that it was a lot because for the past few years, she's been pretty much dealing with a life crisis, which is her divorce and the aftermath of it pretty much. Okay, the kids lives were disrupted because their daddy decided that it was more important for his ugly ass to go out there and be a hoe than it was to be a faithful husband. So he could, you know, so he wouldn't tear the family apart. Don went through a divorce too and was telling Mel how important it was to do mental health checks because, you know, you get so busy that I guess you don't pay attention to your mental. I feel like Mel keeping busy has helped her through the process because it allowed her to, it allowed her mind to be on other things and not just on how stupid, okay, this nigga is. It allowed her not to just 
think about how this stupid motherfucker that she invested um, 14 years in, okay, decided to risk it all for a bitch he didn't even want to be with in real life, okay? Just thinking about what he did and how he handled it and continues to handle the consequences of what he did is enough to drive a bitch insane. And that's what Martel wants. He wants to see Mel crumble. And because she don't, at least not in front of him, he works even harder to destroy her. And so far, nothing has worked, but he continues on with the bullshit like the dumbass that he is. Okay. Martel, Martel can't have a team of people in the room discussing what it is he have lined up because they would get there and just be silent because he ain't got nothing going on other than, you know, trying to see what the fuck Mel is doing. Mel got her line with Jay Bowling, and now he want to try to come out with him a line of suits like somebody going to buy the shit. Like, bitch, please. But anyway, okay. Mel was telling Don how much, um, no, um, she was telling Don how as much as she could, um, she wanted to give her kids some kind of normalcy. Uh, they were used to life one way, and then it changed abruptly. So she tries to do some of the things that, she was doing with the kids before the divorce, like vacations and, you know, going to different things and just doing some of the stuff that they were doing before the divorce happened. Then she went into saying how Mariah and Malia's birthdays were about a little over a week apart. So she was throwing them a joint skating party and she was looking forward to them having some fun and being surrounded by people that, you know, they know, loved and cared about them. And in my opinion, that wouldn't be their dad, which is why you know, his being here, funky ass, demonic ass, wasn't invited. Mel said that she needed to be in a place where she could be her best self and where she would be most productive for her and her children and everybody don't fit into that space. So she had to be careful who she lets into her personal space. And that is why she didn't invite the bitch ass daddy because all he want to do is disrupt somebody's peace because he ain't got none of his own. He is walking around acting like he's not doing nothing to Mel and don't understand why she don't want to deal with him. Whole time, he got her ass up in court trying to take her babies away from her. But he's talking about she trying to hurt him. Like, niggas ain't... It's, it's just the craziness for me. Ain't nobody thinking about his ass. At least not on purpose. It's like you are fucking disgusting, and that's why you mad. Because she ain't thinking about your ass. She moving on with her life without your sorry, disgusting ass. If she really wanted to hurt you, she will walk the fuck away from that show and leave your ass penniless. Because it ain't like you got shit else going on outside the show, you fucking bum. Besides being a hoe. And that apparently ain't paying shit, clearly. Because your ass still broke. You sitting up there plotting and trying to count what, what's in other people's bank accounts. Because ain't shit in yours. In the next scene, y'all, we had Tisha and Marceau. They were hosting the Slutty Vegan event in front of Black, okay? And, you know, they're hoping to do some business with them in Huntsville. In case some of y'all didn't know, Slutty Vegan is a Black-owned popular food chain. They sell vegan food, of course. They got a chance to talk to um, the director of sales to see what she thought about bringing a Slutty Vegan restaurant to Huntsville. I mean, it just may work because the people were definitely lined up for the food. They had a good turnout. So Tisha started giving the person from Slutty Vegan a rundown on who her and Marceau was. She was telling the lady that, you know, they were looking to put their business in the black community. She was telling her how her and Marceau developed the um, plaza that black was in. And she was telling her that Marceau is a general contractor and she was a commercial realtor broker. And they wanted to know if they would be interested in some kind of partnership with them. Um, if they were looking to bring a slutty vegan there to Huntsville, the lady said that when they uh, do tours like that, they are looking to gauge the market. So since there seems to be a great demand for slutty vegan there in Huntsville, she wants to get them sluttified. So bringing a slutty vegan to Huntsville may just happen. And Tisha and Marceau, um, they would love to be a part of it. Marceau would love to be the builder on the project and Tisha would love to be the broker who helps the chain find their location. Tisha is op uh, optimistic about, you know, that happening. So we'll see how that turns out. So y'all, Kimmy and Maurice came out to support. Um, they met up with them down at Black and they enjoyed some slutty vegan. All right. So they were sitting down, they was eating. And 
I've never had anything from that restaurant, but from the, this episode, I found out that they have some interesting names for their sandwiches. One of them was called a hooker and the other one was called sloppy toppy. I guess it fits in with the whole slutty, you know, theme. Okay. Tisha was telling Maurice that, of course, you know, he likes sloppy toppy because he a Scott. I was like, he like it, but can he give it? Okay. Because he nor his brother look like they can reciprocate that shit, at least not in a way that would be satisfying. But I don't know nothing about them people's head games, so let me stop. <laughs> so Maurice was asking Marceau if he was sticking to you know his meal plan. And Marceau said that not drinking and working out has been helping him. So he on some kind of fitness journey, and Martel is supposed to be helping him with that. But we're going to talk about that in a minute. So Kimmy brought up the meeting that, you know, they had regarding Tisha's business, uh, Tisha and Marceau's business expo. She asked them if they thought the meeting went well. I honestly didn't see why Martel was there other than an opportunity to have a scene, you know, plus he wanted to be in the same room with Mel and to see if they had free food, whatever. Cause I just can't get over that. Because what fucking business does he have to showcase down at the business expo? What gems do he have to share? None. In fact, he needs to just come and bring a notebook so he can take notes from the other motherfuckers there. Like, what was he going to be advertising besides hold him? Like, for real. But anyway, Marceau said that he thought that the meeting went great because he was expecting a comeback meeting that involved the yelling and the fighting, but it wasn't that. Tisha said that she felt like they needed to rebrand. I I guess the comeback group. I don't know. Maurice was saying that, you know, it was different now because they have experience. Maurice said that his concern was how they were going to work with their counterparts because they were still going through some things, meaning Mel and Martel. Tisha said that they could just deal with the business side and make sure that they could deal with them on a professional level and let Mel and Martel deal with their own personal stuff. So Tisha asked Kimmy and Maurice how they felt about it, if they felt like they would like to be a part of the event as far as the planning and raising money for it, or would they just want to speak or help out as needed? Kimmy was like, well, that was the idea behind me asking, is it just your event? And I was like, here we go again. I was like, Kimmy, didn't they already go over that? You know, (laughs) but anyway, Tisha said that pretty much nothing was in stone. Um, The event wasn't fully planned out yet. She was pretty much just throwing her and Marceau's ideas out there and wanted their feedback. Kimmy was like, well, that sounds like it's your thing, which was what she was asking while at the meeting. Um, Is this you and Marceau's event? Now, Marceau, I guess, called himself joking when he said that him and Tisha was being sneaky about, you know, their involvement, meaning him and Tisha was using Kimmy and Maurice and the Holtz. He may have acted like he was joking, but I felt like he was dead ass. Because how you expect somebody to work for free? You know what I'm saying? Like, are they getting anything out of it? Like, some people don't mind doing it for free, but you can't ex- just automatically expect that. You know what I mean? What I mean is that if it's something involving a community or whatever, sometimes people don't mind donating their time, you know, but you can't just expect that from people. You know, um, Mel got about 10 businesses four kids and was in the middle of a custody battle with her disgusting ass husband her disgusting bitch ass psychotic ass husband in my opinion okay her ugly ass husband whatever time she squeezes out to help them she and kimmy you know they probably need to be compensated kimmy was fighting cancer her time is valuable too but anyway Maurice told them that it felt like they were being used. Tisha and Marceau felt like Kimmy and Maurice were acting like the Holtz. I feel like they just acting like somebody who can't afford to do shit for free. Their time is valuable. Um, Tisha going to say that maybe Kimmy and Mel been hanging around each other for too long. And Marceau said that um, Maurice and Martel was probably a little too chummy too. To be fair... Like I said, they can't go around expecting people to do shit for free. You know, it ain't got shit to do with who they've been hanging around. You asking them to dedicate their time and effort to something that's, you know, I don't know. That's what I get from it. I'm actually still a little bit confused about the whole shit. Um, Because at the meeting they had last week, Kimmy asked, well, let's just say y'all receive $100,000 
um, and sponsorship. Is that just for y'all or, you know what I'm saying? She just threw that out as an example. And Tisha shook her head no. So I don't know what the fuck is going on, really. Kimmy um, liked the idea of the Black Expo and wanted to help out, but wanted to be clear about everything. Like, you know, uh, when you ask people to work and help, you have to realize that people want to know, you know, exactly what's going on. Are they going to be reimbursed in any kind of way? Kimmy feel like Tisha was throwing out there that it was for the community just to get out of answering questions about reimbursements. But I feel like Marceau made that clear. He said he wasn't paying nobody. So I don't understand why Kimmy keep asking. You either going to help or you're not. You know, that's a decision that you have to make. So I don't, it was just like they were going in circles. Yeah, that was, that was irritating to me. But anyway, while they were sitting there black talking and eating, my soul told them that, you know, he, he wasn't paying nobody. Okay. Um, my soul, no, Maurice had told my soul, he was like, I think y'all as in him and uh, Tisha, he was like, I think y'all had a, have a hard decision to make as far as payment. And my soul said, I don't think it's a hard decision. Cause you know, we ain't paying nobody. And that should have been their cue to say, Okay, well, you know what, dog? I think I'm going to be too busy to help out because clearly they want to get paid, you know? Because even if Tisha and Marceau didn't pay them on the spot, maybe they should have been willing to, I don't know, maybe give them something at some point. Yes, for the community. And with me being who I am, I like helping other people, so I probably wouldn't have charged them anything. But Kimmy is going through what she's going through, and Mel is juggling like 100 things at once. So, you know, they can't get mad if, you know, they desire some compensation. This whole conversation, it was really tiring, okay? Draining. So Tisha was like, we trying to decide if we want this to be our thing or do we want the group to be a part of it? And I felt like her saying that was letting them know that they only wanted them to be a part of it if they were willing to work for free, okay? So y'all, in the next scene, we had Martel's stupid ass and Marceau's ass, okay? Marceau was in that bitch, not, uh, yeah, yeah. Marceau was in that bitch looking like a mechanic, okay? And Martel's ass, he was sitting up in the house with a fucking skull cap on. So I'm thinking maybe he didn't pay his heat bill, so his head got a little cold. So it appears as if him and Marceau have entered into this deal where he helps Marceau reach his fitness goal and Marceau will help him with the builder's test. Martel done failed that test several times, and I'm guessing that this time didn't work either. Because I heard that he's now trying to get Ariane to pass the test so, you know, he can work under her license. But anyway, Martel asked Maurice if, not Maurice, Martel asked Marceau if he started his workout yet. And he said that he had, and he pulled out a picture of what he wanted to look like, which was himself back in 2018. You know, um, he was a little slimmer then or whatever. And he was looking to get back that way in a time frame of four months. Martel said, well, if that's your goal, then that should be my goal, my goal too. My soul was like, that's how long it took me to study for the test. I was like, boy, if you can't pass an open book test, your ass going to need four years worth of study time, not just four fucking months. And maybe Martel could pass in a shorter amount of time if he took his head up out of Mel's ass and focused on what the fuck he needed to be focused on, okay? Instead of trying to see what the fuck Mel was doing. This nigga was like, I took the test and failed it a few times, so I'm going to do something a little different and get my soul to help me. And in return, I'm going to get him into shape and help him become a more attractive person. I feel like guys who ain't got shit to offer look to perfect their outer shell and need to work on becoming better people on the inside instead of being so concerned with what the outside look like. Because you can have muscles, be fit and all that, but how you are as a person on the inside can make you so fucking unattractive. I promise I don't find Martel to be attractive at all. I am like 100% full-blown disgusted when I see him. Them thirsty, desperate-ass pick-me hoes that be in his comments must have mental conditions, okay? Must. My soul told him that he needed him to immerse himself into the book 
and see shit from the book's eyes, I guess. Martell ain't going to immerse himself in shit but bullshit. He claims that he had a good study guide for Martell. I wouldn't be surprised if Martell is trying to get Marceau into good shape so he can walk up in that bitch pretending to be him and take that test for him. Martell want to be on some sister sister shit. Old Tia and Tamara face ass. And speaking of, it was looking like he borrowed one of their fucking t-shirts. That motherfucker was tight as shit. You could see every last one of Martell's heartbeats. That's why I could see that his heart stopped when Marceau told him that Tisha had received an invite from mail for Mariah and Malia's birthday party. At that point, everybody had been invited except him, even Chris Fletcher and his wife, who probably brought their grandkids, okay? That's what the fuck he get. You want to be an asshole, you're going to get treated like an asshole. And to the dummy who got down in my comments want attention, Lifestyle Essentials was her name, I'm going to give her ass attention. I'm going to give her the attention she was looking for because she brought her ass through my comments with her capital letters looking to get cursed the fuck out. So here you go. You don't come to my channel telling me what the fuck I need to learn. I'm going to read y'all her comment. She said that those are his kids. He should be at that party. Y'all need to separate the cheating Martell versus the father Martell. He is allowed to be a father until the judge tells him otherwise. First of all, you dumb bitch, who's keeping him from being a father? He has joint custody. He is allowed to be a father on his motherfucking seven days. It just so happens that, you know, it was Mel's seven days when the girl's birthday party came around. She threw them a party and no, she was not obligated to invite their trifling ass daddy if she didn't fucking want to. That was her money spent on that party and her court appointed time with the kids. You fucking dummy. You look like a bitch who let men run over you. So my question is, how is that working out for you? He is the one that destroyed the fucking family. So he got to deal with the consequences of that. And one of the consequences of that is having a separate life from his now ex-wife. He should know, okay, about separate lives because he went and started living one. He started a whole new family while married and living with his other family. Since you feel like he's being kept from being a father, invite him to your kid's party. He apparently likes going to other kids' party, okay? I mean, Mel gave him an invite to their daughter's party last year and he didn't show up thinking he was hurting her. And he went to Ariane's daughter's party instead. He only showed up at that party with his giftless ass to see if Mel's guy was going to be there. And also to prove to her that he could do whatever the fuck he wanted to do. Ain't shit he do ever about the kids. He was also embarrassed because everybody was at his baby's birthday party but him. Well, everybody had an invite but him. That is the consequence of being an asshole. She don't have to invite his motherfucking ass to shit. That's why there was a custody order in place to specify what days, to specify who get the kids on what days. It was her day to have the kids, okay? And nowhere in that order was she ordered to invite him to an event that she put together. I don't give a fuck who he is. If he cared about missing days like that, then he shouldn't have destroyed his fucking family. He can go and party with the hoes he was out fucking with when he should have had his ass at home with his wife and his four beautiful children. If he can throw himself a birthday party, he can throw his daughter's one too, but he didn't want to do that. He wanted to keep up mess and mess was going to have his ass in jail looking stupid. So his stupid ass left because a nigga like him ain't trying to go to jail because he got a lot to lose up in there like his asshole. But according to his baby mama, he done already lost it. But let me move on. Stay the fuck off my channel, please. Talking about something, he should be at that party. He shouldn't be nowhere his motherfucking ass wasn't invited. That's called trespassing, okay? The sign on the door said private party. What part of that don't you understand? You talking about we need to learn and separate the cheating Martell from the father Martell. Bitch, they both the same motherfucking person, stupid. What the fuck we need to separate them for? Furthermore, you don't come to my channel telling me what the fuck I need to do. I don't need to do nothing but what the fuck I'm doing. You need to focus on what the fuck you should be doing and maybe then your channel will grow. You need to stay your ass over there where the fuck you at and shut the fuck up talking to me. Moving on. So Martel was asking Marceau what he thought about the meeting that they all had. Marceau said he felt like it was beneficial and it was Tisha who took the initiative to bring, you know, the idea to the group, you know, the business expo thing. So him and Martel thought that it went well. Martel was saying how he felt like everybody was professional in their own right i was like now nah, you my brother mr akala ho ho ain't nothing professional about misspelling some shit your ass done <laughs> had in your family since birth and that's alcohol in my opinion he should have came out the womb knowing how to spell that shit correctly so 
the conversation shifted when Martel asked Marceau about when did Tisha and Mel become besties again and asked if it was real. And that's why he can't pass that test other than the fact that he's slow as fuck. He worried about the wrong shit. Why is that your motherfucking business that Tisha and Mel are now back, you know, getting along? Because you liked it more when they wasn't getting along with your messy fucking ass. You mad because you can't be a part of a girls club or whatever. My soul said that he didn't know, you know, when him, when Tisha and um, Mel started getting back along or whatever. But he think that they just decided to move on. Then my soul told him that Tisha got the invite for his kid's party. So that was Martel's cue to act like he didn't understand why Mel was doing what she was doing. Meaning inviting everybody but him to the birthday party. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was like, you sorry ass nigga. Stop acting like you ain't been a stupid bitch post-divorce. You was one before. Okay? But definitely post. Your ex-wife and mother of your kids have had to reduce you to somebody who can only contact her through email just to keep her sanity. And here's the thing. She invited him to celebrate Sugar Mama's first birthday party, and he was a no-show. She invited him to the girl's birthday party last year. He was a no-show, and she said that was proven in court. This is the stuff that narcs do. You know, they so determined to hurt you that they are even willing to hurt their kids just to hurt you. So in my opinion, to keep from, to keep him from hurting the kids, Mill decided that from now on, she won't invite him. He can have his own separate shit for the kids if he choose to, just like he did for Tank. Mel didn't go bombard that uh, restaurant uh, and say, you know, it's Tank's birthday and you're going to have to uh, have me removed because I'm going to be here no matter what. She celebrated her son's birthday either before, you know, she turned him over to his father or after. But she respected their custody agreement. He's not respecting shit because he feel like he can, he, he don't, he feel like he don't have to. Niggas like him try to demand respect but don't know what the fuck it is to give it. So he goes into saying how when he couldn't see the kids for 56 days, Mel didn't call him on the girl's birthdays, but she did say that she sent him an invitation and he chose to go someplace else. He gonna say that Mariah been emailing him saying that she wanted him to come to the birthday party and that Mel said she can, that Mel said that he can come. I feel like he's a fucking liar because Mel talks to her kids and I feel like she had already had a talk with Mariah and Malia explaining to them that their father was not going to be in attendance. Okay. And he could do something with them another time. Remember he, the same nigga that sat up there and said that Mel had called him and asked him if he was suing her <laughs> instead of asking her attorney. He tried to make it seem like him and Mel was cool knowing that they weren't. He is a pathological liar. I feel like he going to do or say whatever to try to make Mel look bad. Okay. Cause he don't want to be the only one out there looking bad. Every time he attempts to make her look bad, he makes himself look worse every single fucking time with his wan head ass. So now he want to make her look bad by, you know, letting the world know that she didn't invite him to the party. So my soul was like, y'all still going through that? What do you think the problem is? And before Martel could even begin his life, Marcel was like, now Martel, because he knew that Martel was the problem. And he knew Martel was getting ready to lie. Everybody but Martel know that Martel is the problem. But this nigga, Martel Isha, sat up there with a straight face and going to say, Mel didn't want nobody to see that she's actually working with him in terms of effective co-parenting. I was like, you stupid motherfucker. She been showing us that she has been trying to work with you when it comes to co-parenting. You fucking dummy. That's how we know that you on some bullshit and co-parenting successfully ain't your goal. Your goal is making her life miserable because she has decided to move on without your sorry motherfucking ass. Co-parenting ain't never got to be this difficult, but you making it difficult because you want to bully her into taking your sorry ass back and it ain't going to work. Nothing he does is about the kids ever. It's always some fucked up agenda behind it. Martel says that Mel says she's trying to stay peaceful. And he said that he don't mess up her peace. That's what he said, y'all. That's all he do is try to fuck with a bitch piece. Popping up, calling and texting back to back when he did have the number. Suing her for her kids. Constantly telling her that she slept with this one and that one. Okay? 
knowing that she didn't, trying to turn people against her, calling her a neglectful parent. He lives to try to destroy a bitch piece, but he's sitting there lying like that. Just lying. He said, I don't say anything wrong. I don't do anything wrong. It's all about the kids. And I'm just looking at the screen with my mouth open like, bitch, are you serious? You don't do or say nothing to her now because you can't, ho. She done blocked your ass on everything there is. You can't call her, text her, DM her, nothing. You can't do shit but email her and she will decide whether or not she respond. And when she does, there will be a paper trail on your psychotic ass. Like the nigga is not only delusional, but psychotic in my opinion. Whole time, my soul just sitting there smiling because he knows that the nigga is full of shit. Him and Martel both are full of shit, so he can tell Martel full of shit. So Martel sits there and starts complaining again about not having Mel's number. Okay? He don't want Mel's number to talk to the kids. He want Mel's number to talk to her. And there's no need for him to talk to her. Anything he want to know about the kid's school, he can take his ass up there and find out on his own. If they get hurt, you know, and I hope they don't, I'm sure Mel will notify him then. Other than that, he don't need to have Mel's number because he don't want it for the right reasons. He was like, she can have my number and talk to the kids whenever she want. But that's the thing. She don't bother him when he has the kids. But he want to bother her when, you know, she has them. That's not how joint custody work. When he have the kids, he have them. When she have the kids, she have them. They talk to the kids when they have them. It would be nice if they could call and talk to the kids when they with the other parent. But Martel is a different type of nigga. So Mel has to deal with him accordingly. He don't give a fuck about them kids. That's evident. He sees them as a meal ticket and a weapon against their mother. Nothing more. Talking about, I still don't have her number and I just want her to do right. I was like, nigga, who the fuck believe Mel ain't doing right other than your drunk ass mama and those stupid ass bitches that be in your comments? Ain't nobody but them buying what you selling. Like literally. You know what I'm saying? You don't need her motherfucking number. You want access to her. You know what I'm saying? Not them kids. She don't want you. Move the fuck on. So my soul told him that pretty much. He couldn't help him because him telling him what he would do is just hypothetically speaking. He told him that he was going to have to talk to Maurice about it, I guess, because Maurice done been through a divorce and shares a child with his ex. But Maurice ain't got no sense either. So what Martel needs to do is stop lying, go ask to be medicated for his delusions and leave Mel the fuck alone and move on with his life. But Marceau told him that, you know, he couldn't see himself in a situation where Um, he was telling the kids that they couldn't see the other parent. So Martel's bitch ass was like, and I feel the same way. So dramatic. That's how you know he was lying. He lying pretty much every time he opened his motherfucking mouth though. He was like, I tell Melody that I want to see my kids every special day. Bum. It ain't what you want. It ain't about what you want. What you want don't fucking matter no more. You will see your kids when it's time for you to see your kids, okay? On your motherfucking seven days. If their special day happens to fall on a day that they're in your custody, fine. If not, that's too fucking bad. Deal with it. You caused this. So fucking deal with it. He gonna try to make it seem like Mel don't give a fuck about being being with the kids on special days. (laughs) He was like, Mel would be like, we'll celebrate whatever it is next week. That's her respecting the custody agreement. That don't mean that she don't want to be spending those special days with her fucking kids. His bitch ass always trying to make it seem like she don't give a fuck about her kids. When he's the one who don't give a fuck about them. Okay? And she keep protecting his ass to keep the kids from really seeing that he really don't give a fuck about them. In my opinion. That's why their party was invite only. Invites to the people who care about them. I'm sure it bothers her when she have to spend the holidays without her kids. But she knows that she has to deal with what is. So she works around the custody agreement. And makes plans to celebrate on the days that she do have the kids. Because that's the adult thing to do. Since Martel is a child in the head. 
He can't understand that. So Martel was like, just because she feel like that don't mean I feel like that. That was him saying that he was going to do what he wanted to do. As in, Mel can celebrate the special days at a later date, but I'm going to celebrate them on the date that I want to celebrate them on, whether it's my day to have them or not. And that's exactly why she need to put a stop to his ass because he done already he he done already shown her what he gonna do. And, you know, I'm not gonna keep saying what she should do. You know, because I heard her, I was able to catch a few minutes of her live and she was talking about an experience that she had a while ago where I, it sounded like she went to the authorities for help. Something happened. And I'm guessing that it was about Martel. She didn't say it was about Martel, but I'm thinking that it was. And she didn't get the response that she should have gotten from the police. And she had to get on the phone with her attorney. You know what I'm saying? Before they, the police or the authorities signed off on whatever it was. That's just what I took from it. I'm assuming that maybe she did. Maybe she had been trying to get something. And, you know, <clears throat> I, 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 I just don't know. But um, this is a mess. It, re- it really is. He is disgusting. And he needs to be stopped. And, you know, I'm not going to assume that Mel ain't trying to do shit behind the scenes to stop him. But anyway, <clears throat> um, Mel did a live, okay, and um, she don't want the people telling her what she should do because everybody don't know everything that's going on, and what works for you may not work for everybody, okay? That's what she was saying. Now, I don't know if she was directing that towards the folks that, you know, um, was saying that she should have let Martel in the party or she was directing to the folks that were saying that she needs to get a restraining order against him. Could have been both. Maybe it's a part of, you know, her plan to let him hang himself, you know, um, so she can go back and get the full custody that she asked for. I don't know. But I feel like as long as she knows that this clown can be a danger to her and the kids, what else can you say? Okay. Um, I heard that from now on, she's going to have security. Um, whenever she filmed with Martel. So that's a step in the right direction. Okay. Um, somebody came through my comments and said that Mel had tried to get a restraining order against him, but her request was denied. I don't know how that person would know that information, but that's what they said. If that is true, maybe she should keep trying because he has shown that he is unstable and he is on camera harassing her. If anything happens to her and she went there for help asking for a restraining order and they did not her restraining order, they will be responsible in my opinion. Okay. So his ugly bald head raising that looking ass was in the confessional saying that he feel like if it was about the kids, Mel should extend an invitation to him. First of all, you stupid ass bitch, it's never about the kids. And if you was a decent fucking person, she would have extended an invitation to your sorry ass. I mean, why not? She invited your broke, annoying ass on vacation with her and the kids. Nigga, it's you. It's you. That's not doing right. With your stupid ass. With your stupid bitch ass. He made me so fucking mad. Talking about he gonna make sure she's invited to what he throw. Of course you are. Because it's her you truly want to see, dummy. But she don't want to see you. So deal with it. So he ends the conversation by saying he's not letting up nowhere. And he meant that shit. Which is why he has to be stopped. Right the fuck now. He said he not letting up nowhere. As far as. I'm concerned that meant that he was not letting up with trying to force Mel to take him back either. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully she gets licensed to carry like her mama while he was up there hollering in uh, Van's face. He must don't know that Van is uh, licensed to carry. And if she feel threatened, she can pow pow his ass. Okay. He going to fuck with the right one one day. He is. But anyway, hopefully she gets license to carry. And if she don't, um, I hope eventually she get a restraining order against him. Even quit the show. 
But we gonna hop on over to Stormy Scene so we can hop right back the fuck off because I really don't give a fuck about that. To sum up her scene, she was talking to Courtney about how her cousin, the Turnip King, his energy changed. She said he was starting to come in late and how it was good in the beginning and how he said he wasn't happy. Courtney told her that maybe he was tired of working for his cousin. So I guess that was his way of saying fire him because that's what she did. They probably decided that, you know, they were going to fire him before he quit so he couldn't get unemployment. And if they truly fired him and it wasn't just a scene for the show, that was stupid. Being that they only have six employees and he was the only one on production. So what's she supposed to do now? Give her baby his position? I tell you what she could do. Put Big Mouth Betty to work. Give her something else to do besides run her mouth about somebody else's daughter. She can take a break from that and help her daughter get them people they shit. So Stormy called her cousin into her office, asked him what was up because she noticed things were different. He said all he knew is that it was cool in the beginning, but Courtney started riding him pretty much, always saying something to him about what he was doing or what he wasn't doing. Stormy asked Courtney if he had been riding him. And he said, yeah, he said he ride everybody, but especially him because he expect more because he is the cousin. Courtney was saying he was coming in late, but as far as the cousin is concerned, he don't be late according to the time clock and the grace period. Courtney said that he still be late. A few minutes late. The cousin said, well, you can't help traffic. Courtney said, well, that's why you leave early. He said, I try. Stormy said, what about working hard? He said he feel like he does work hard and do more than anybody else there. Then they were talking about the phones. He said everybody be on their phone, but Courtney only say something to him when he's on his phone. Stormy said her thing is she don't want the kind of energy that is between her and her cousin now. She felt like she was coming at him out of love and concern for their relationship, and he just wanted to be right. So she told him that they was going to have to let him go. So she said that, um, what did she say? She said that she, um, they grew up like brother and sister, and she not trying to kill that relationship over the bullshit that they got going on now so she fired him she said she fired him for business sake but she also fired him so their relationship wouldn't go down the toilet and that's if she even fired him if y'all walked into stormy's warehouse today his ass will probably still be there okay this shit was probably just for a scene for tv because who fires their relative on tv <clears throat> plus her business ain't just started failing why wait till you get on tv to fire him like child please but anyway, Courtney asked him if he was going to see him at the house uh, that week. And he said, yeah. Courtney said that, you know, it was just business. So they were supposed to still be cool. Of course they are because the shit was probably fake. Now let's just move on to this last scene, y'all, with uh, Martell showing up at the kid's birthday party uninvited. But before I get into that, I think Mel might want to send on a copy of the judgment, her court judgment, because Own dropped a clip from uh, Saturday's episode. <clears throat> it was a clip that wasn't shown in the actual episode, actually. Um, did I say that right? It was a clip from the episode, but they didn't show it on Saturday. They dropped it afterwards. And it said that Martell dropped the custody case. And that is not true at all. Martell ain't dropped shit. Martell, broke bum ass, didn't have enough money to keep fighting Mel, okay? And deep down, he didn't want the case to go to trial because he knows that Mel and her attorney was going to prove him to be the unfit piece of shit that he is. Narcs don't like to be exposed or embarrassed. And the receipts that Mel had was going to do both. But he didn't drop shit. The courts dropped it for him. Y'all listen to this shit. So I just told her the other day that I was gonna drop um, the case in terms of um, trying to get full custody because of some of her actions. I said, I'm, I'm gonna drop it because we just got the Cause, trial cause, date. Cause she been doing better or something? Honestly, um, it's, it seems like it. You know, she's gotten more involved in school, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'm with the kids and, and um, the kids, you know, said they're not being
So it's like, first of all, you bitch ass nigga, you said that you told her that you was going to drop the custody case because of some of her actions. You mean actions like her suing your broke ass the fuck back? Then he going to try to make it seem like Mel don't be involved with her kids schooling, but it was her taking them their lunch when his stupid ass forgot. She took them lunch so that they wouldn't be hungry and could focus on learning and not their stomachs growling all fucking day. She be taking pictures of her up at the kids school at different functions so it's like bitch why is you trying to make it seem like she's a bad fucking parent you bald head funky foot little dick bum ass sorry ass delusional ass terrible ass dumb ass fucking bastard you fucking bum not only is she involved in the kids schooling but she pays for it as well with your broke ass this shit really pissed me the fuck off. He was just telling Nell and Chris two fucking episodes ago that Mel had 20 something babysitters and that she was doing this and she was doing that. But all of a sudden now when he can't afford to keep her ass in court. OK, and she decided to sue him for custody. Something that jeopardized the joint custody that he had all of a sudden. He want to go around telling folks that he don't feel like a judge should tell the mother of his kids what to do with their children. Okay. He don't want a judge telling his kid's mother or him what to do with the children. It was okay for the judge to be involved when he thought that he was about to get custody though. It's like, bitch, please. I cannot stomach him. And he going to say that he was with the kids and they say that they're not being babysat as much. And it's like, first of all, whoever male had watching the kids before are the same folks she has watching them now, including her brother, Marcus bitch Mel showed you that she wasn't about to let you tell her how she was going to do her seven days. When you, the reason babysitters are needed in the first fucking place. So please stop fucking lying with your disgusting ass. You can't afford to see Mel in court or anywhere else, not even in a marriage, but she carried your ass, which is how you stayed afloat. You bum. Gonna try to take her kids away, had her in court paying money for lawyers, all because you mad she don't want your ass no more. And if you ever had a chance with her, bitch, you better believe that your ass don't now. Any man that would try to take their kids away from their mother when they know that they're not a bad parent is a dirty, evil ass bitch. And that's exactly why your ass is where you at now, which is standing on the corner of Nowhere Boulevard looking stupid. Talking about how she's made progress. So I'm going to drop the custody suit, bitch. Since you want to talk about progress, how about you going to make some progress? You still in the same fucking spot she left your ass in three years ago, bum. He going to say, I don't want full custody for real, bitch. We know you never did. You wanted what came with having full custody, which is her motherfucking money and control with your whack ass. Let me get on to this last scene. <clears throat> so Mel had made it to the skating rink. Some of her guests were already there. She gets there, find her kids, and she like, let's have some fun. But she looks up and sees Martel walking around that bitch like Jason, only without the mask. But he should have worn a mask because it probably would have made him look better. Mel sees him and she says, what did she say? Um, let me talk to you for a minute. And she asked him to step outside so they could talk. She didn't want the shit to be on camera. He just a walking in that bitch like his ass received an invitation. Then he going to get his ass in a confessional acting like he didn't know what Mel wanted to talk to him about. Like the nigga is psycho. You crazy ass bastard. You know damn well what she wanted to talk about. You know damn well your ass wasn't supposed to be there. But what he did, I, I I just, this shit like this is just not only disgusting, but it's unbelievable. What he did was walk in, okay? And he went straight to the kids because he wanted to make Mel look bad because he knows that she was going to ask him to leave, okay? But he knew once the kids saw him, they was going to want him to stay. You see the game that he was playing? His goofy ass, okay? His goofy looking peanut head ass was in a confessional. Talking about what's going through my head is, what does she want to talk about? I guess it's some bullshit. You know, he said, I bet it's some bullshit. <sighs> my level of disgust. Mm. 
Bitch, first of all, ain't shit going through your head but air. And you knew exactly what the fuck she wanted to talk about. She wanted to talk about your ass leaving back out that very door that your ass came in through. And you right. She want to talk to you about bullshit because you are the bullshit. So Mel said, I didn't tell you you could come to this. This is a party that I'm throwing for my daughter. You go throw one for yours. Mel was so pissed. She was like, because we ain't got the same daughter today, bitch. This is my daughter. I'm throwing a party for her. Now you go throw one for yours. Or have you ever thrown a party for your daughter since I left your tired ass? This is a private event that I put together and I'm asking you to remove yourself. So he goes into acting like he just don't know why he has to leave. He says, but why would you do that though? But at the same time, y'all, the crazy nigga was smiling. The nigga is nuts. But anyway, he said, why would you, why would you do that though? As in, why would she ask him to leave? Like he wasn't the same nigga that was suing her for custody and going around telling people that she was a bad parent. Okay. It <laughs> unbelievable. I wouldn't be surprised. No, I'm gonna just uh, let me just leave that where it is. Mel said, "I would rather you get her later today." This nigga said, no, have me remove because I'm not leaving my daughter's party. I would have been like, bet. Next thing you know, you would have heard nothing but sirens and helicopters. It's a crazy nigga in the building, y'all. It's a crazy nigga in the building. Mel then reminded him, okay, that based on Madison County for everybody in the state, odd years are for the mothers. That was an odd year. But she know damn well Martell don't know nothing about no even and odds. So Martel says, you haven't even invited me to Mariah's birthday party? Like it was a surprise. He know damn well he wasn't invited. That had been established. Nigga, did you receive an invite in the mail, dummy? So she said, I don't have to invite you. She said, I don't have to. She told him that he was welcome to get Mariah later on. It wasn't a problem. He kept saying no and telling her he wasn't going to he kept telling her what he wasn't going to do, which was leave. He said he going to celebrate his daughter on her birthday, which is fine as long as he did it from home or anywhere outside the building and at a later time. So Mel was like, do celebrate her birthday, but later on, later on, it's still her birthday. So Mel was in a confessional saying how she didn't want to make a scene at her baby birthday party. And I get it. Because why should, you know, her kids and their guests be subjected to Martell's stupidity? So she said, you know, she was trying to lower the temperatures and keep the drama down. In other words, keep Martell from acting like the low class, bottom of the barrel ass nigga that he is. Embarrassing the shit out of the kids. Mel kept telling him, you're welcome to get her later on today. I don't have a problem with that, even though I don't have to let you get her because it's my time to have her. But Martell kept saying, I want to celebrate her birthday today. So I was thinking, nigga, what if Mel wouldn't have thrown the girls a party today? Would you have even seen, would they have even seen you? Probably not. Because like she said, your sorry ass ain't thrown none of your kids a party since she left you. Then after he caused all that chaos, he never came to get the girls to celebrate with him. He had actually went to Atlanta which was his plan from the beginning. It was never about the kids. Because if it meant that much to him to celebrate his daughters, then he would have came back and got them. But instead, he chose to do other things with his disgusting, stupid ass. I feel so sorry for those kids. And also for Mel. Because this all happened just by making one mistake. Her saying I do was probably the biggest mistake she could have ever made. But she was young. So I don't fault her for that. But anyway, Martella walkie talkie loose dick broke Alicia Hope was just there to show Mel that he could be there regardless of anything that she said and to see if her new nigga was there, of course. So Mel was, 
you know, trying to get Martell to leave quietly, and he refused. At that point, production had got involved. I believe it was production. But I also heard that some aunties had got involved, too. I know Miss Van was standing right there, and Chris Fletcher had walked in. But Chris ain't going to never check Martell because I feel like Martell got something on him. Or he just ain't used to all the ghetto-ness. I'm going to go with the first one, though. So Mel kept telling the dummy that later on was still her birthday. And he knew that. But he wanted to do what he wanted to do. And he had a screaming tantrum when he couldn't assert himself like he had planned on doing. Because, the you know, the cops were going to be on their way. Mel said, even though it's an odd year, you can still get her. So Martel was like, you had them on, you had them each on their birthdays. And she was like, and you were invited, but guess where you were? At another bitch daughter birthday party. He's saying he didn't get an invitation, but he lied so much. Plus Mel said that it was proven in court that sh she had given him an invitation. Okay. So. Martel said, Van, stop. Van said, you need to step back. He said, you step back. And so someone was talking and Van said, she not in this. Later on, I heard that um, there was Martel's auntie. He had brought some people with him. Okay. And I guess Van told her that she wasn't in this. And that's when Martel had screamed at Van and said, you not in this either. Mel told him that <clears throat> he could have a party whenever he wanted to, okay? But he wasn't trying to hear that. He said, call the cops and went walking into the skating rink. And Mel was like, please don't make me call the cops and have you escorted out of this private event. <sighs> Just disgusting. And knowing Mel, she probably had that court order in her purse to show the police that it was her time with the kids. And that he wasn't supposed to be there. You got to stay ready for niggas like Martel. You got to stay ready for narcs and they bullshit. So when he told her to call the cops, he didn't really mean that because he took his ass in there to hug Mariah and also to manipulate the situation and probably told his daughters that their mama was making him leave. Damn right she was. Ain't nobody with sense mad at her about it. Now what? Get your ass out. He wanted to act like Mr. Tough Guy, but ran when she told him that she was going to call the cops. He'll scream and act like a donkey with women all day, but he ain't going to do it to a man or men with the authority to lay his ass flat. So he had his stupid looking ass, okay? And a confessional talking about Mel said that she was going to call the police on him and things of that nature and how, you know, that's been Mel's thing. He said that Mel has called the police on him multiple times and every time things have gone in his favor. If they've gone in his favor, then why the fuck was he running? Stay there where you at and let it go in your favor again. Nigga, you have no favor. You have enablers, motherfuckers who have been willing to help you. You know what I'm saying? Willing to help you get out of your bullshit. And to help you with bullshit. But they're not going to always be there. You understand what I'm saying? To help your stupid ass. I heard that he had a few friends on the police force. I don't know if that's true or not. But if he had been getting off, that would explain a lot. He going to say that she was trying to do whatever she could to hurt him. <clears throat> but the whole time, he done had her ass up in court trying to take her babies away from her. But she's the one that's trying to hurt him. Narcs in their minds are always the fucking victims. He was like, if she was trying to co-parent effectively, her calling the cops wouldn't have came out of her mouth. If he was trying to co-parent effectively, him filing for custody wouldn't have came out of his mouth with his sorry ass. But anyway, he finally left. He got his musty ass in his whole mobile and drove the fuck off. Then Mel went back to attending the people who were invited she got out there and skated with the kids and sat down to talk to Tisha and Kiki for a minute 
Kiki wasn't expecting Tisha to be there. She didn't know that her and Mel were back talking to each other. So when Mel had rolled up on her skates, Tisha was explaining to Kiki how Mel, her and Mel got back to talking. Mel said that she was glad that Kimmy brought her and Tisha together. And while she didn't know what the future held, she was glad that her and Tisha could at least be cordial. So Mel was asking them if they were back cool, as in Kiki and Tisha. Kiki said that they had their moment and was able to discuss the things that were bothering them. She said the shit with Tiffany is new, but she was going to try to move past it. She said that she still feel a way about that, but she was going to speak to Tiffany about that. She said she was telling, um, no, um, then, um, Kiki was telling Mel that Tisha was telling her about the tea party that she was supposed to be having. So Mel invited Kiki to that as well. So they're supposed to learn how to communicate at the tea that Mel was hosting. A communication specialist was going to come in so they could learn how to communicate in a way that was, wasn't offensive and, you know, just learn how to have respectful communication amongst them. Kiki said that in order for you to have respectful communication, you have to feel respected. And she wasn't feeling Tiffany. Mel told her that sometimes respectful communication was not saying anything at all. So they just going to go and see what happens. So despite of Martel, you know, um, coming there and showing his ass, Mel said that the party was still a success. They still had fun. You know, they got together and sang happy birthday to the girls. And that was that. And the girls look so cute and they uh, press out and earrings. Okay, so that was uh, my review for Love and Mary Chonsfield episodes four and five. Okay, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Y'all take care and I'll chat with y'all in the next one.